All right, this video is intended to show other teachers how I create my calculus lessons, kind of what goes on behind the scenes. Um, today, instead of using a USB microphone, I'm using a MacBook Pro with my iPhone headset, which has a microphone on it. And every now and then I'll do this when I'll eat something at school. But what you don't see is a bamboo, a Wacom bamboo tablet and a USB microphone for audio. Most computers I've discovered, the ones that I've used, the audio microphone works fairly well, and I didn't realize how much I needed a USB microphone until I had one. So consider that, but if it's pricing and issues like that, um, I started off using a Walmart gamer headset that had like a little microphone on it and a headset, and I didn't record my face at all. So that's how I started. The software that I use is Camtasia, which is this untitled project right here. So this is your Cam Camtasia backdrop. This is the canvas where you do a lot of your work, your timeline down here where you can uh, edit everything however you want to do it. Um, I also use Sketchbook Express a lot to paste my um, homework problems into that I work out. And for me personally, I use another piece of software called Snagit, which is this guy right here, um, which will allow you to grab part of a screen as an image and then you can paste that picture image into any document you want. Um, if you're on Windows 7 you could use the snipping tool. If you have smart notebook software you can use that screen capture tool that comes with that software. So but this is what I use. And in Sketchbook Express uh, the larger rectangle is where I put my math problem and the smaller rectangle is where I'll put my face. My students said they preferred to actually see me. So I put my face down here um, and then I worked the math up here, and it took a lot of trial and error for me to figure out exactly what the dimensions needed to be. I would record a little bit, and I'm sure there's some mathy way that I just didn't come up with, probably because I was in a hurry. So I just did it the old-fashioned way, trial and error, till I got a recording area that I like. Now with Sketchbook Express, you can do different things. You can add layers of stuff. So this is my base layer here, and if you if I click this layers, you can see my background. I've saved this as the as the lesson template and it's my background and then I can go into layer one and whatever I write on layer one will not go on to that base uh, to that background so um, what I do is I load up the different layers with the different images of the problems that I'm going to do so if you teach English or if you do history or science then you can post pictures in or text or uh, things from the web that you think are important for your kids to know that you're going to talk about as part of your flip class. So I've got a, a sketch, I've got a snag it open, and I have a, uh, a problem here, and this is from my pre-calc class that I do with Christina Stevenson, and I'll just copy this problem. That's my daughter. She's always making sure I do things the right way. Uh, and, and then in Sketchbook Express, I can just paste it in. When you hover over a pasted in item in Sketchbook, uh, you can grab it and, and move it according to those arrows. So if you grab the edge of the circle, you can move it wherever you need to. Notice I've pasted in layer one. Um, you can, on the center, make it bigger or smaller as you need. And so usually what we do is, uh, you know, I try and make sure that I have enough room to work, but it's also big enough to see. I try and snug it into a corner. And when you're ready, just hit that X. And then there's the problem that I work. And now I'll fill in all of my layers, and, and I can turn this layer off. It goes away. I can go into layer two. He's ready to work. So I can have all the layers off. I can work with five at a time, six if you count the background, and you can turn on and off the different layers. Okay. I work my problem out, and what the kids don't see is that I've already chosen my uh, pen tip style. I like the pen tip personally. It gives me... Um, uh, a very consistent line. Uh, the pencil one can sometimes be a little bit different and vary in its thickness. The same thing with the brush. The pen I've noticed, just the ballpoint pen, works the best for me personally. Experiment as you would uh, to find what suits your own personality. Um, the other things that I use a lot are these two erasers. One's a hard eraser, which means it's gone. One's a soft eraser, which means it's a smooth erase. So it, you, you don't automatically lose it if you go over it with the eraser. The other thing that I use every now and then is the highlighter, um, which is this broad nib thing. Every now and then if I need to highlight something will be the only time I use that. 
The other thing that I like is um, the color palette, and I click the crowns so that I get a smorgasbord of colors right away. When I do math problems, I try and change colors as I show a step. I sometimes uh, get out of a habit of doing that, and I hide all that over here on the edge. And so what I do is I arrange my screen so that I can see everything I need to see because I can edit it later in Camtasia. And then using my um, uh, tablet, then I choose a color and I work my lesson here. And, and this will get me a really nice uh, ball pointy, um, and I'm writing slow for you here. So uh, this, is, this is what I do, and I narrate it, and I do what I need to do, and I show them stuff, and you've got the different tools up here. You can insert text. You can move things around. This is, lets you write. This gives you straight lines. Um, so there's all these different options, again, play with as you need uh, for you. And then when I get done with a particular problem, I, I close that layer, and I open a new one. And I also pause after every I, – I save each – example as its own file in Camtasia. So when I get done with this example two and three, I'll stop videoing and add it to my Camtasia timeline. So it would show up over here in media. And then down here is, is where the editing takes place. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and pause it right now. Uh, and if you have Sketchpad or Camtasia, let you have a, a couple minutes to look around and I'm gonna take what I just have recorded here and I'm gonna put it on the timeline so that we can see uh, how that looks and what needs to happen when we do that. So control, uh, Command, Shift, and Two on the MacBook will stop your video and then you can name it whatever you need to name it. So I usually call it whatever the lesson unit is, like chapter 6.2, example one. Uh, so what again, whatever naming uh, habits you use when you label your files on your computer, that's a, a way to think about labeling, labeling your video files as well. So here's what I look at when I start doing the video editing process. You can see that I've, you know, as soon as you record a lesson uh, or as soon as you are done recording, it goes over here into your media bin. And the first lesson you record will drop right down onto your timeline for editing purposes. I don't do probably one-tenth of what Camtasia can do. It's a super robust software. I've started doing more and more and more, but um, there's a lot that goes on in there that I, I don't I haven't messed with yet. Um, some of it's lack of time. I, I try and do my videos as quickly as possible, uh, but and sometimes I, I do take time to really go in and do some editing as needed. But I can I can zoom in and, and make my timeline really small so that I can really check out small pieces that are going on and I can make very small edits. A lot of times when I edit my work, I leave mistakes in because if I have to edit audio, then I need to edit the video. And if I edit the video, I need to edit the audio. And because it's math, if I have a speech uh, pattern that keeps coming up, if I say um a lot or if I say like a lot, uh, or if I sneeze a bunch, you know, sometimes I can get the sneezing out, but uh, because I'm doing a, a math problem, I usually have a hard time maybe taking out some of those little personal foibles of speech that maybe creep in. But nonetheless, here's the timeline that I'm looking at. I come in here, I arrange it how I want, I cut what I want, and so for example, this is the second take of this particular uh, lesson, and if I want to cut tape, if I want to cut my video, you can see I'm explaining. There's a disaster happens. Here I go. Start again. You see the change there? So uh, I, I start again, and, and here I go. So I don't want this first part. And what I'm going to do is just I'm going to highlight and, and command and click both of these. And then C command T separates your track at that spot. Uh, this part I don't want anymore. So I'm going to highlight those two using my mouse pad going to dump them and then I'm going to slide this part over. This is what this is really what I'm interested in. And uh, showing you guys what I do, one of the basic things that I, I like to do is kind of make it halfway professional. So I add fade in, fade out to the front and back part of the lesson. 
for each example. So if there are several examples that go on this lesson, then I put them all together and make one ginormous lesson. And then I also break apart each example so that if students want the whole thing, they can get the whole thing. If students just want little pieces at a time, they can get little pieces at a time. And it really is not a big deal to do that. There's Khan Academy. Hello, Khan. Uh, the pioneers, some pioneers in flipping instruction along with uh, Aaron Sams and John Bergman. So uh, this is my timeline that I'm looking at. I've, I've got fade in, fade out, and, and I, I'm basically I'm good to go. Some really cool things if you teach math and you uh, or if you teach a computer class or you're trying to set up a lesson you can uh, choose to show what your cursor is doing so you can have your cursor highlighted uh, you know and anything that happens in this part of Camtasia you just drag it to the bottom and notice when I when I grab my cursor highlighter it shows me where I can put it so when I grab that cursor highlighter it shows me hey I can put it down here on this bottom piece and let it go and there's my cursor I hit to click on the gearbox, and now I have options to further edit the video or to now edit what the cursor highlighting does. If you want to put different click options in there for right or left click, you can do that. Uh, if you want to do different animations, Camtasia does all these things. I won't go into all the gory details. I don't use a lot of this when I do my math because I'm already pointing out through my teaching exactly where I want the kids to focus and it's a little bit quicker for me so I don't spend quite as much time uh, editing because you know there is a lot to do as a teacher so and then of course with the audio you can raise or lower or do different things here so Camtasia is really robust it's not a super difficult software but it can be a little intimidating because there are a lot of things um, and again anything over here the other thing that I do um, is I showed you my lesson template and let me get to a spot here, the blue box down here on the bottom. So what I like to do is I like to, uh, I will edit this guy and I will, let's go ahead and edit him real quick. So I'm gonna choose the editing tool. I'm gonna close the gearbox guy and I take out what the kids don't need to see. So I, I close in those borders, which is why I have that template up. And I will, um, turn off cropping and stretch out my problem. So there's that guy. I'm also going to change my canvas because I have a white background. I'm going to change my cam canvas to white. And now you can't tell what's going on. The other thing that I'm going to do is make my picture bigger because I'm in love with me. Just kidding. Uh, I like the kids to see me. Uh, it, makes them, it makes them a little bit more personable. There's their teacher right there talking to them forever live on YouTube. The other thing that I do is since I fade in and out on my um, videos is I add a little white box to cover this border down here. So I can, I take this white box, I drag it, drag it over and I'm, there's probably 5 million ways to do this. This is my way. Uh, and down here on the timeline, I stretch it out over the whole show so that you can't see it. And there's a little drop shadow in there, which gives the bo box a real nice shadow, and I take it off. And so when I'm done, oh, now what happened? My face slid behind my drop box, so I'm just going to move that guy down here, and there it goes. That's, that's what I do, and this is the part that the kids would see. Now, be careful if you use those boxes, because notice I stretched the box the entire length of the video well. I might, I might not need it right here because because now it's it's covering up stuff. So what can you do? Well, you can get that box out of there and shrink it down to whatever size you want. Or let's say that we don't really need to see my face in a particular spot. You know, like right here, we want to see this whole timeline. Let me get to that. There's the timeline. What I can do is is trim this part. So highlight the that part. Uh, let me see, highlight this part. And we want to separate audio and video here. So right click, separate audio and video. It'll create another track of video. And here's the, the camera for the FaceTime or your webcam. So I'm just going to trim that guy. I can take that part off and I can put in my fade in, fade out sequence here. 
So notice when I click fade in, fade out, it shows me where I can drop it. And now what I have is a real cool fade out as we start talking about Camtasia. So that's kind of how my lessons come together. Um, and the software is, is really good software for doing that. It's um, been very handy. It's user friendly. And I started off small, but I've learned more and more and more about how to use it. And so it's really uh, very handy software, and it, it grows with you. It grows with you in Camtasia. The TechSmith folks are excellent with troubleshooting and help. Um, they have a great website where you can go through also and get good, good, really cool ideas on how to create these lessons and different uh, editing tips and tricks that you can follow. Uh, we've recently added a green screen, so that's been kind of fun to mess with. So there's all, all these things going on. And um, I hope this helps you with your flip lesson and flip class and some different ideas on what to do. This is the, the sc scratching the top of the iceberg. And if there's something out or you have a question, just post it in the comments or tweet me at Hazelwood Math. Uh, I'd love to help. That's what I like to do. Have a good day.